come and discover Portugal with us. Please like, subscribe and leave your comment. Your support and opinions are very important to us. Thank you. The Church of São Pedro de Lourosa is located in the parish of the same name, which is part of the municipality of Oliveira do Hospital. This town has a long history dating back to before the founding of Portugal. In 1119 it was donated to the Cathedral of Coimbra by Teresa, Countess of Portugal, and declared a protected territory by King Afonso I of Portugal in 1132. It received its first charter in 1347 during the reign of King Afonso IV and the new Manueline Charter in 1514. Its greatest monumental treasure is the Mozarabic parish church, whose foundation dates back to at least the year 912, at a time when this part of the Iberian Peninsula was under Muslim rule. But what does the name Mozarab mean? After the decay and fall of the Western Roman Empire, the Iberian Peninsula was invaded by some so-called barbarian peoples, including the Visigoths, the Alans and the Suevi. At the beginning of the 8th century, the peninsula was completely dominated by the Visigoths, who had converted to Christianity in 589 and were in a period of internal conflict that led to a profound weakening of the kingdom. Thus, in 711, the process of invasion and conquest of the Iberian territories by the Muslim forces of the Umayyad Caliphate began. In just a few years, they managed to occupy almost the entire peninsula. During the following centuries, new administrative, social and economic rules were imposed by the Caliphate government, but the people who lived there were allowed to maintain their customs and religions as long as they didn't disturb the prevailing order and pay the jizya, a compulsory tax for all non-Muslims. The Christians, who would make up the majority of the inhabitants of the Iberian Peninsula between the 8th and 9th centuries, were essentially divided between those of Eastern worship, of Byzantine influence, and the Mozarabs, heirs to Visigothic worship and tradition. Over the generations, the Mozarabs adopted elements of Arabic language and culture, they kept their religion, their clergy and their churches, and were forbidden to build new temples. The Mozarabic Rite, or Hispanic Liturgy, as it was also called, was the liturgy of the Catholic Church that was consolidated from the 6th century onwards in Iberian territory, centered on the Visigoth Kingdom of Toledo. Influenced by the presence of Jewish communities in this territory since before Romanization, it developed as a different branch from the Council of Jerusalem in 50 AD with the consolidation of differentiating aspects such as the celebration of Sunday instead of the Jewish Sabbath, the commemoration of the Last Supper in the Eucharistic Rites and the progressive incorporation of the New Testament into the Sacred Scriptures. After the fall of the Western Roman Empire, the Hispanic Church developed its specificity, remaining linked to the Latin tradition in confrontation with doctrines such as Priscillianism, Arianism and Paganism. The conversion of the Suevi and later the Visigoths to Christianity, combined with the Byzantine presence in the south of the peninsula, helped to enrich and crystallize a very particular and regional liturgy. The Mozarabic language, which descends from Late Latin and the first Romance dialect spoken in the Iberian Peninsula from the 5th century onwards, was also an important distinctive feature of this culture. However, it is probably in Mozarabic art that we can most easily appreciate the specificities of this deeply Iberian culture marked by the confluence of Christian, Islamic and Jewish elements. This artistic miscegenation is expressed in works produced between the 8th and 11th centuries, which correspond to the period of coexistence and subsistence of this Christian community during the Muslim presence.
Some striking testimonies of these artists have survived to the present day, such as their vibrant and colourful illuminations that decorated manuscript codices, using colours such as intense yellow, depictions of fantastic animals, letters decorated with human figures, and motifs inspired by architecture such as horseshoe arches and interlaced elements. Sculpture and jewellery from the Mozarabic period is characterised by the use of techniques imported from previous periods, with geometric and plant elements predominating. Figurative elements also appear, mainly zoomorphic, alluding to creatures from a biblical context, often with influences from Oriental art, which arrived here at the hands of the Byzantines and Muslims. Mozarabic architecture is also the result of the fusion of Paleo-Christian, Visigothic and Asturian components with others of Islamic origin. Stone or brick construction was used and the buildings had sober exteriors with little decoration. Roman-influenced columns with Corinthian capitals were used as supports and, in some cases, columns from Roman buildings were even reused. The alfige often appears as an element that frames the arches, with the horseshoe arch being the most commonly used, both isolated and in pairs, either indoors or by four windows, but also to form beautiful arcades. The Mozarabs faced periods of greater adversity under Muslim rule, the result of fiscal pressure and the emergence of conservative Islamic movements that made coexistence between religions more difficult. Some of them ended up emigrating to areas in the north of the peninsula, which, in the meantime, were being conquered by Christian forces. The name Mozarabic derives from the Arabic term Mustarab or Mustarib, which meant someone subjected to the Arabs or Arabized. The term comes to us via the Spanish Mozarabe, used by the Christians of northern Iberia to designate the Christians of Al-Andalus who settled in their territories. With the advance of the reconquest of the Iberian Peninsula, the Mozarabs were strongly affected, seeing their status among the Muslims increasingly weakened, even resulting in the destruction of some of their churches. Having lived outside the influence of Catholic religious orders such as the Cistercians, who had great power in the Iberian Christian North, the Mozarabs preserved their rite and liturgy, which was distinct from the prevailing Latin liturgy. The unification of rituals, defined in 1080 at the Council of Burgos, led to the abolition of the Mozarabic liturgy in 1086. The 12th and 13th century saw the progressive loss of relevance and individuality of the Mozarabs, leading to their practically total assimilation by the larger and more powerful Roman Catholic community. Between the end of the 15th century and the beginning of the 16th century, Cardinal Francisco Jiménez de Cisneros organized the collection of all the Mozarabic texts and codices in Toledo and ordered the printing of their missal and breviary. This important step revitalized and preserved this dying cultural tradition, and a chapel was set up in Toledo Cathedral to hold the Mozarabic liturgy, which is still celebrated daily there today. This contextualization of Mozarabic culture and art serves to reinforce the importance of the parish church of Loraza in the Portuguese and Iberian historical and monumental panorama, being a rare example of pre-Romanesque architecture in this territory. This church is dedicated to the chair of St. Peter of Antioch, representing the teaching mission given to the Apostle Peter by Jesus Christ. It is the only known church in Portugal with this invocation. 
In its construction, various materials from Roman times were reused, such as beveled ashlars, suggesting the presence of structures from this chronological period in this region. Doubts about the specific moment when this church was built continue to divide experts, and it is not certain whether it took place under Muslim or Christian rule. The discovery of a block of loose stone with the inscription Era 950 from the Hispanic era, which corresponds to the year 912, led to this date being associated with the construction of the Church of La Rosa, making it one of the oldest in Portugal. The church has a longitudinal floor plan with a tripartite chevet. Above this, over the central nave, is a bifora, a window surmounted by two arches and divided by a pilaster called a mullion, which originated in Roman times and appears frequently in Visigothic, pre-Romanesque and Islamic architecture. The protruding arms of the transept, which are lower in height than the crossing, have roofs supported at the corners by roll modillions, which are some of the few sculpted elements on the outside of the church. The north and south side facades are symmetrical and comprise the bodies of the narthex, which precedes the entrance to the church, the naves, the transept, arms that give the cruciform shape to the plan of the temple, and the chevet, where the chancel and apse chapels are located. On the northwest side of the church of Lorosa, there is a group of anthropomorphic graves carved into the rock, mostly facing east, which form part of a total of 22, 13 outside and 9 inside. During the reconstruction work on the temple in the 1930s, the graves were revealed after the dismantling of the Gothic bell tower, which was later rebuilt on the east side. When the pavement inside the church was lifted, a rocky outcrop was revealed, with several burials and graves dug into it, corresponding to a use that extended through time until at least the 12th century. The main façade faces west and the entrance is through a narthex, a covered gallery that precedes the passage to the interior of the temple and was usually intended for penitents and the unbaptized, a model that comes from Paleo-Christian basilicas. A number of interesting pieces are on display here, including the aforementioned stone, inscribed with the date 950, corresponding to the year 912, on the church's portal, which is thought to indicate the year this monument was built. Other objects visible here include fragments of friezes, part of a medallion of Asturian influence, a Gothic capital, a grave lid decorated with a circular bas-relief with a cross in the center, and fragments of Gothic inscriptions. One of the most important objects here is a Roman votive altar with an inscription dedicated to the god Jupiter. This find, together with other Roman elements reused in the construction of the church, led to the possibility of a Roman temple on this site. The central body of the church is divided into three naves, with two floors and three bays formed by horseshoe arches supported by large springers, which are shared by the start of two arches. To the left of the portal, at the beginning of the nave on the gospel side, there is a space that would correspond to the old baptistry, with a circular base carved into the rock and a small channel for the circulation of water. At the beginning of the arch of the first bay on the left, there is a reused ashlar with an inscription, probably dating from the 12th century, referring to a possible Romanesque remodeling of the church, which was more structural than decorative. 
The crossing area, which precedes the chancel, has a horseshoe arch on each side and there are traces of an iconostasis, a dividing structure that separated the nave from the area reserved for the clergy. In the arches of the crossing, leading into the transept arms, we can see the remains of mural paintings, which may date back to the 17th or 18th century, when maintenance work was carried out here and Baroque altars were installed. Inside the church are some important pieces of sacred art, such as an image of Our Lady with the Child, dating from the 14th century and possibly created by Master Peru, and a statue of Saint Peter, dating from the 15th century, with additions and alterations made later. The chancel is preceded by a horseshoe triumphal arch and has a rectangular plan with a granite slab floor. In 1911, the pioneering art historian Joaquin Vasconcelos was one of the first to analyze the historical and artistic importance of the Church of La Rosa. He drew attention to the deplorable abandonment to which the church had been consigned. In 1916 it was classified as a national monument and, in 1930, the Portuguese National Monuments Trust began in-depth restoration and reconstruction work that completely altered the building's appearance. In 1 June 1930, the Church of La Rosa was visited by various personalities and specialists, such as engineer Henrik Gomes da Silva, architect Baltazar de Castro, architect José Vilasa, who would be the author of the final project, and photographer Marcos Abreu, who would document the restoration process. Plaster was removed to expose primitive elements, various outbuildings built after the Middle Ages were demolished, the Gothic bell tower was moved to its current position, and the aforementioned excavation of the pavement revealed the graves under the church. The choir loft was dismantled and removed, the roof of the narthex was lowered, the chancel was reduced and the walls were rebuilt to dimensions thought to be original. The apses, the walls of the transept and the side naves were also deeply reconstructed. During these restorations, some beautiful and important examples of Mudeja or Hispano-Moorish tiles dating from the 15th century were also found and are currently on display in the north arm of the transept. The restoration was accompanied by the growing interest in the so-called Mozarabic art, a term that is still linked to this church today, then deemed as an architecture of Christian resistance in times of Muslim domination. Subsequent re-readings have placed the Church of Lorosa in different historical artistic designations, from repopulation art to reconquest art, culminating in the most current classification as pre-Romanesque Hispanic of Asturian influence. Whatever the designation, this is one of Portugal's most important and unique monuments. Thank you for discovering Portugal with us. If you like the video, please click on the like button and subscribe to the channel to follow our new releases.